What's going on everybody? Welcome back to OutYH Studio. Today we're taking a look at some of the things you need to get started in Adobe InDesign. This will be for the newest version and hopefully by the end we'll be able to make something just like this on the screen. So let's get started. Okay, so when we just open InDesign, this is what's gonna look like. You can see your recently opened files on the bottom here. We're gonna go to the top left here and create a new file. It's gonna bring up this window and it's gonna be in this unit called PICAS. It's more for typography. We're gonna change to something a little bit more familiar like inches. And here, I'm just gonna leave it at a standard letter uh, eight and a half by 11. You can change the orientation from portrait to landscape here. Uh, you can have facing pages. You can start at a different page than one. You can change the columns and the gutters as well as the margins. But we're gonna leave all of this as is and just hit create. Great, it's gonna bring up our page. So the shortcut for moving the page around and you wanna pan it is if you hold space and then you drag your mouse around, so left click with your mouse and drag it around, you'll be able to move the canvas on the page. Now, if you hold Alt or Command on the Mac and then use your scroll wheels on your mouse, you can also scroll in and out. Taking a look at our interface, on the left here, we have all of our tools starting from select tool to direct select tool all the way to our zoom and pan, which we just went over, to the stroke and fill. So these are what dictates the color. We'll go over this in a little bit. On the top is just a simple action bar uh, or uh, uh, option bar. This is pretty standard with all Adobe products. And on the right is kind of our quick access to tools. So here I just have a couple of these tabs open. Um, so things like page, uh, properties, stroke, and color. Some of the things I'll be using a lot is what you would put over here. First, we're gonna go over the pages. Now pages is really important to InDesign because there's a lot of magazine making and book making that is being done in InDesign. So obviously you want a very good organizational structure for the pages. So in order to create a new page, we have to go down here where it says create a new page. Simply click on that and it'll pull up a new page. Now, since I have it in facing pages, you can see that whenever I create a page, it's gonna create a spread for me. If we want to delete pages, we can go ahead and click the delete selected page, or we can go here and select the page you wanna delete, right click, you have all of these options, you can duplicate it, you can move, but we're gonna go ahead and delete. So. These are all the page options. There is something called a master page, which is something that is very important to InDesign. What it basically does is if you have a master page and you have an object on the master page, for example, you have a black square on this page, then what's gonna do is gonna have this black master page square on all of the pages that are here. So if, for example, if I only have it on the left here, you can see it's gonna only show up on the pages on the left. but if I go ahead and move this and also have one on the right, then on my first page here, it's going to go ahead and have that as well. So that's very useful if you have any symbols or light legends and logos that you wanna have down here, it'll basically show up on every single page. The next thing we're gonna look at that is very, very important is layers. Now, you can see I don't have my layers over here, but what you can do is go up to window and these are all the things that you can turn on. I'm gonna go ahead and find layer, turn this on, and you can see that a new pop-up has basically arrived on my screen. Now, I can basically put this anywhere I want on the screen, depends on where you want it, but I'm gonna go ahead and dock it in this quick access bar here. So if I click on my layers tab, you can see that it's gonna pull up all the layers that I have in my document. Now, if we wanna create a new layer, it's very similar, I just have to create a new layer, if I want to delete it, go ahead and select that layer and delete it. If I want to change the name of the layer, I can double click on this layer and it'll bring up a pop-up. For example, if this is all of my images, I can name it image. I can even change the color to whatever color I want and then hit okay and that will be changed to that layer. Now, what layers do is it basically layers one thing on top of another. So for example, if we have a bunch of squares here like that, uh, this is another trick. We can use Alt and drag something in order to copy multiple versions of it. So here we have many different squares. Here in our layers, I'm gonna go ahead and create another layer and that's just gonna be text. So I'm gonna keep all my text on this layer and all my images on the green layer there. Now I'm gonna create just a text window using the text tool here and I'm just gonna say square. And then 
go ahead and change this so color or you guys can go all the way down here double click that and play around with the scroll wheel whichever color you like select that uh, just so we can place one on top of another so you can see here that i have a text on top of a uh, a black square if i go into my layers and i want to turn off all my text i can do that and now we can't see all the text same thing with the images we can't see the images anymore uh, we can also lock it by clicking the box beside the eye. So if I lock all my text and I try to select, it's only going to select the image. So if I try to move it, it's only going to move that image. Same thing with the image. If I lock the images, it'll only select the text. So I can move the text, but not the image itself. Okay, now let's go over how to actually import images and text so that we can make a layout. So we're gonna go ahead and go on the top, go to layouts, create some guides, we're going to go ahead and use five different columns and two different rows for this example here. You can change the gutter uh, to wider or narrower, but I'm going to hit, go ahead and hit OK. So there's two ways to import images into our file. First is if we go into the rectangle frame tool and I drag that, say I want this image to take up three of these columns and two of these rows, then I can go and find my image. So wherever you basically saved your image, if I have mine on desktop uh, and I want this image on the left here, then I can simply drag and drop this image into my frame. And you'll see that it's gonna come in and it's not gonna look super good. So what we can do is change the fitting. If you right click on the image, go down to fitting, you can either fit the frame proportionally, which means uh, the frame will trim whatever the image is and not really care about what the actual size is and just fit it into the shape of your frame or you can right click and fit content proportionally, which means it's gonna try to squeeze your image so that it's 100% in the frame. That most likely means you're gonna end up with white bars on the bottom, top, left, or right. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep it to frame proportionally just to make that look nice and snug. Now, the other way to do it is if I simply go back to the folder where I have my images and I don't create a frame before I do this, I just simply drag it in. So maybe I'll do it with the Im other image if I simply drag and drop this in, you can see that it's gonna give me a little thumbnail. Now I can drag this thumbnail on the page and it'll basically dictate how big that is on the actual page itself. It'll create the frame for me so you can see if I trim this down like this, it'll help me do that and basically cut the image so that it fits into my frame. But go ahead and just leave this on the bottom here. And again, I'm gonna go ahead and fit that uh, proportionally. So if we want to move the image inside here, you can see that if I double click it, it's gonna bring up the frame of the actual image. And if I just move it on the inside, you can see that the image is gonna move, but the frame itself, which is this blue line, is not gonna move at all. So now that we have all of our images in, we can preview using the W to get rid of all the guides and stuff like that. But we're gonna go ahead and add in some text. So in order to do that, we go over to the left, hit the typography tool and we're gonna create our title. So um, adventure awaits is going to be our title. And you can go over here to properties and change that to whatever font you like. So for example, if I wanna do Sophia and I wanna make this a little bit bigger, like a 30 font, then we can do that. You can see my text has been cut off. So when your text gets a little bit too big, you can simply drag this down and it's going to reappear again. Now, there are many different other options here, like how spaced out they are and then how wide apart the different characters are. So if I change this to 100, you can see that the space between the letters themselves have increased. Uh, the horizontal and vertical scale, how italicized they are. So there are many other options here that you guys should definitely play with. I'm not gonna go over it too much, but make sure you explore this. You can also justify the paragraph on the left, on the right, down the middle, and that's all found here. Great, so now that we have our title, we can go ahead and make a body paragraph. So again, I'm going back to the type and I'm going to create a paragraph here. Now, obviously you can write whatever you want. I'm gonna go ahead and right click and just place it with placeholder text. Select everything here and again, change it to my font. So you can see we already have some sort of a composition here. Now it looks a little bit squished down here so I can move this 
uh, a little bit over and now it's got a lot more space to breathe. But we can also copy this and put it on top of our image. And the reason I wanna show you guys this is if we go ahead and write justify, we can actually change the color of the text. So here you can see it's black and it's on a darker picture, so we can't really see what's going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and select everything and you're gonna go here to appearance where it says fill, double click on this and I'm gonna change it to white. So right here, it's gonna turn white. If we want an outline on the text, we can change the stroke. So for example, if I want a bright pink outline on the text itself, it's gonna do that for us. And this is what it'll look like. But I'm not a big fan of the pink, so I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. But here, we're already, we already have a great composition, a great looking page. Now all we have to do is go ahead and export this. So in order to do that, we go up to file, we go to export, and you can basically export this uh, wherever you like. If you guys wanna continue learning, there's a couple of videos on other cool layouts on my channel. There's also a in-depth video of some of the tools on the left here. So make sure you go check those out. If you learned anything, please don't hesitate to leave a like and subscribe, leave your questions down in the comments. And that's it for me. I'll see you guys in the next one.